And the second one is checks and balances. Checks and balances deals with the federal government and the three branches and how they relate to each other. The idea behind checks and balances is that each branch, the legislative, executive, and judicial, they all have powers over each other, so not one branch becomes too powerful. So um, if you look at this, this little chart here, uh, I'll give you just a brief example. You have the legislative branch, and their job is to make and write laws and pass laws. So let's say the legislative branch passes a bill. A bill is a, you know, a law to be, and it hasn't become a law yet, and that bill is passed. I mean, they pass it through both houses of Congress. And then that bill goes to the President of the United States. It's not a law yet. The President can look at that law, and if he doesn't like it, he can veto it. He can reject the law. And that's a power the president has over Congress. So that is, a check is another word for a power. That is the executive having power over the legislative. Now, the law, or the bill, I should say, is not dead if the president vetoes it. If he does veto it, it can go, it goes back to Congress. And Congress can override the presidential veto if it gets two-thirds votes in both houses, in both the House and the Senate. If they get that, if they get two-thirds, it overrides the presidential veto. That is a power, that is a check that Congress has over the president. Another example, uh, let's say there's a vacancy on the Supreme Court. Supreme Court, there are nine justices, Let's say there's an open spot. Um, the president appoints a person to be on the Supreme Court. That is a power the executive, the president, has over the judicial branch. Then that person, that person who the president nominates, has to be approved and confirmed by the Senate. And that, of the Senate, is in the legislative branch. And that's a power the legislative branch actually has over the executive branch and the judicial branch. So all three branches are coming into play here. And they're all sort of checking each other when the president has the ability to nominate a Supreme Court justice. So that's the idea of checks and balances. The United States cannot turn into a dictatorship because of checks and balances. The president will always have Congress over him, and also the president also will always have the courts, the judicial branch over him. So that is checks and balances.